How's it going? What? It's a hard week. Why? Everything's happening. How it always is. Like what? Uh, well, we had this project, and then I have another project. For... That's in the past. Like, it, it's still like the, the consequences of that past. <laughs> Oh, I got two exams this week, so yeah. two midterms, I mean. We're starting to have a general meeting for everyone. I was generally pretty impressed uh, by the report. Uh, very nice. Oh, thank God. That's just maybe like, I don't know, did I, uh, did I like, I guess, Really? Yeah. Especially yeah. the video. Because the video is like, there's no way I can do 10 minutes. What? The video gave me an anxiety attack. I just started to report for you. Instead of talking about it. I feel like I, the longer I talk, the more I start repeating myself, the more irrelevant I start getting. The longer I talk, the more mundane my voice starts to turn. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, um, you know, I, I think it was pretty good. Um, I'm going to send the class uh, an email uh, requesting permission to upload it to the platform. So, you know, I think that's the advantage of having the video uh, first for me. I don't have to um, Look at all the analysis or anything like that. I have so many to look to me. <laughs> but also, you know, since the projects are different, I think it's nice to just to try the project. But yeah, you know, that was that was good. Hmm? Uh, I haven't read it. <laughs> well, it's because we didn't see the picture. <laughs> I I read that before. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Uh, it has been up for a while. Oh, really? Like, you like a degree? Yeah, that's about right. I mean, it's, it's difficult to keep track of time these days. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's some work to do today, to, uh, tonight, I guess, don't forget. And so we're going to look at convection today. Oh, we put it on. Yes. He said that maybe we can put the discussion time by the Mm, I'm not sure if uh, I, I think we should do it, but I, I, I think it should be in addition to. Oh. Okay, so I don't know how many people we can get, you know, at the same time. And if let's say we have an hour, maybe not everybody will get to speak. Oh, no. What if, like, I guess you do it amongst ourselves, you know? Like, do it ourselves and do it in the middle of the group? Like that? Yes. Is it optimal for the next Yes, because, you know, we want to have that uh, asynchronous components with Google or whatever is present be there. Uh, yeah, I like that idea. So, you know, get a number of people, and then we upload the discussion. So, let me think how it will work. So we have, there's questions right, for each, um, for each paper or for each assignment. So maybe you can, because people should read the, the assignment beforehand. Uh, 
and go through multiple questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me look at that one. Yeah, video. You guys are the video generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm getting used to it. Solutions are there for the students to watch the video and just do it for watching. So I think you know, before the video was better than reading, but now I don't know what to do. Like they don't read and they don't watch videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So Sometimes the videos have like zero videos. Or uh, no more problems. So, you know. Can we try it? Can we try it? Can we try it? Yes. I always enable, but I never look. <laughs> I did that to like cover my own skin. Be like, I'm not the one not like putting my own skin. Like, I think it's good. So. <laughs> I think it's good. 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 All right, so consider. Um, this case, or this situation. So you're going to have different um, blocks, right? So this is um, small element of stellar fluid. Hmm? Yes. So Initially, you have this, and we're looking at this um, this element, and it's going to move up here. So, and it's going to move kind of like that. So, this is a situation that we're having a star, and we have mentioned that the only about 10% of all the hydrogen is going to be fused into helium in the core of a star. And that is because uh, the energy uh, transmission is radiative in the, in the core for stars that are the size of the sun or or larger. Uh, but we have also mentioned that small stars like red dwarfs, that they are 100% uh, convective. So what does that mean? Uh, 
Yeah. Yep. So I think the easiest way to visualize this is with a not the lava lamp. You have the blobs. And so in the star, you know, they are all the same fluid. Um, but they form you know, these separate entities. And in the core of a star, because the pressure is so high, nothing can really move. But as you move away from the core, uh, this might be possible close to the, uh, the surface. And I mentioned before that uh, what we actually see of the sun is the photosphere. So that's kind of where, where the temperature goes to zero uh, or mathematically. Um, before that, you might be able to have uh, convection. So you have these separate entities and they start to move. So this is going to be at a distance R from core or the center. This one is going to be at a distance R plus dr. So it moves the distance dr. And the pressure over here is going to be P of R. Oh, it's going to be messy, uh, this lecture, with the rows and the piece. So this is going to be P. And over here, we're going to have um, P of R plus P prime function of R, dr. This p prime is a derivative of the pressure with respect to the radius or the, the distance. Okay, so in the sun, you have several convection zones, actually. So you'll have like the core. And then over here, you have uh, really big blobs. And over here, you have smaller ones. So these small elements are about the size of Texas. So the diameter is about uh, 1,500 kilometers, so like 900 miles or so. And they live for about 8 to 20 minutes. And the sun is covered by about 4 million of these. So it's like it's bubbling all the time. And they're called uh, granules. And in this other part, the blobs are bigger. So they are about 30,000 kilometers. They'll be bigger than the Earth. And they live for about 24 hours. So then you have your, uh, your core where your convection is not possible. And then at some radius, you start to have you know, these, these phenomena. We're going to look at what the uh, necessary conditions are. So, okay, we're, we're gonna we're gonna see it in there. So, um, it depends on the temperature gradients. So, if the temperature gradient uh, changes 
slowly and we see the child. Um, then this phenomenon can happen. But it's going to be related to the opacity, the luminosity. And so as you move away and you know, those values change, um, these parameter changes and it allows you to have like bigger or smaller uh, blobs. So, you know, really in a star, things are always kind of oscillating uh, about a little bit. So you cannot say like exactly that's the radius where it happens, but you know, sometimes it will be around there. Well, I guess you will have a, a range of, um, of radius when will start happening. Yes, exactly. Okay, so there are, you know, the three methods of, um, of energy transport. So the radiative, uh, we will still have a component that is uh, radiation. Uh, conduction is still not um, important in this case. Why will that be? Yeah, the whole mass is moving through this. But they are in contact. Yeah, so if it's the size of Texas, then the conduction is not going to do much. So, yeah, you're right. So the mass kind of moves together, and that's how the, the energy is transferred. Okay, so there's going to be some interesting stuff here. So the pressure is going to change um, for the environment and the forces are always, um, I, I guess, cancel out by what the blob is putting out, right? So the pressure changes instantaneously when this blob moves up. But there are other things, the the temperature. Over here you have T of R and I'm going to write it R plus VR. So this is the temperature of the environment, but the temperature of the blob, because there is not really, because conduction and radiation are going to be negligible, the temperature doesn't change because you don't have um, heat exchange. And the density Density is going to change for the environment, but it's going to change for the blob. The, the density is going to change, but in general, it's going to be different than the density of the environment. So what happens if you know, it moves up, uh, the pressure changes a little bit, temperature remains the same, but the density is higher over here than down here, or, or is higher than the density of the blob. Eureka. So what will uh, Archimedes say?
just think about the, the density. What happens if the density is higher up here than the density of the block? You have to win force, it's going to be pushed down. What if it's, um, what if this one is lighter than the density of the uh, up here? It continues moving up. So that's your lab alignment. So at some point, you know, this blob is going to um, reach a density, which is going to be higher, wait, low, uh, lower in this one. At that point, um, it might have some, um, some velocity. So you will know, have um, acceleration or the acceleration. Okay, so this process is um, adiabatic. There's no heat flow. The new density density is going to be the initial one Remember, there's a delta uh, a dr over there um, times dr. This is the change. Um, let's start here. This is the uh, original or initial density. This one, the rate of change of the density pressure times this pressure It's a, it's a chain. Okay, so the condition for stability is that or there's the, the blob doesn't move up. Is that this thing is greater than This is the density at the new place. So this is the density of environment. of the block.
So this one is the same. This is your condition for this is greater than this one. So let's look at this guy first. And then we're going to look at guy second. So the density the density is a function of the pressure and the temperature. equal to So the total uh, derivative. So we're going to um, assume that this cellar fluid is an ideal gas. So for an ideal gas, PV equals um, NKV times the temperature. So the density is the mass divided by the volume. So that is N times M, where M is the the mass of one particle of this gas. And we have N particles divided by the volume. So over here we have volume equals um, NKBT divided by the pressure. From here, we get that the mass is uh, rho volume divided by n. Mm, actually, I want to draw just. So I just got by the volume. We can get rid of this one. And this is just
That's the density. It's a function of the pressure and the temperature. Okay, so we're going to take a few derivatives. to the pressure, uh, it's going to be M. Over KBT, and then we have the mass. The mass is KBT uh, pressure over, so rho over pressure. So this is going to be equal to rho over the pressure. And then the other one, the temperature, Substitute the mass again. So this is going to be equal to minus rho over T. So we have this one and that one. So then this derivative. equal to rho over p minus rho over t dt dp. some jujitsu. What is that derivative? So uh, the derivative of I guess can be a partial is um, equal to that. This is what we have over here for the temperature and for the pressure. Um, not for the pressure, there was some additional algebra in there, but you get it in terms of the pressure too. Hmm? This, this one is a row, yes. Um, you have to do um, a little bit more algebra with the ideal gas, but you also get this one. So using that, this one is rho over p um, minus the um, 
natural log derivative. So that was number one. was this one so the derivative of rho which is a function of r with respect to the radius. I guess we're sorry about that. So we're going to do the same thing. So this is going to be derivative of rho with respect to pressure. Chain rule. Mm, this one we had it before, so it's just roll over uh, the pressure. So this is rho. Pressure prime over pressure. And with respect to the temperature, This one before also. Uh, let's draw over T. This is rho temperature prime over temperature. Okay, so do you recognize this one and this one? Like the whole course. So these are the um, hydrostatic equilibrium, and this one is the um, the luminosity, so the energy um, equilibrium. So we know what those are. Um, dp dr is minus g m function of r, rho function of r, divided by r squared. Um, 
this one is kappa luminosity which is a function of the radius density uh, luminosity divided by four uh, speed of light, and then a t cube. So this was was from the uh, block body radiation, and four pi um, r squared. Which one? This one? A. So A was that constant. Um, Stefan Paulson. So we have the second part, and we can uh, write it in terms of these two um, guys. It's going to be this one and it's this one. So it's starting to look a little messy. So we're going to invent some notation. This is uh, Bell adiabatic. one is just del. So using these two guys, you can rewrite, rewrite that we had was the delta rho term We can get rid of the DRs. And we can move this one over here. Okay, so if this is true, then the blob is not going to move, it's going to stay there. If this is not true, then it's going to 
uh, So with this del uh, notation and bring it in the previous derivation, this can be rewritten as So this is the logarithmic uh, derivative, and this is the other term. And we have some stuff over here. So for the star to be, to not explode, what must be true of this uh, derivative of the pressure? So this one is negative, right? We have this other negative over here. What about the density? Yeah, it would be bad if it's not. <laughs> what about the pressure? The pressure too, right? So it's zero at the, at the very end. So positive, positive, negative, negative. This is a positive um, term. So we can focus now on this part. So what is the condition for uh, for equilibrium where the blob is not moving? Okay, so if this guy is greater than this guy, then the blob just stays there. If this one is greater, uh, the blob's going to move. So you know, with that, you could find where exactly that is going to happen, which is R. Okay, so we'll be right over here. So this one is the adiabatic term, right? So there's no uh, heat exchange. And the other one is the environment. So that's why this one is called the adiabatic term. So from the definition, this uh, del adiabatic Gonna be, it's gonna be long. So three kappa. Mm, everything is a function of R, so I'm not gonna write it. Kappa, rho, and L.
And then it's going to be multiplied times the other one, it's like we divide it. Now we'll fit. So this is going to be, so we can get rid of the R's squares, and we can get rid of the densities, we can get rid of the negatives. So Kappa, luminosity, pressure, divided by 16 pi, C, A, T to the fourth, G, M. So M, P, T, kappa um, are functions of, now are functions of the radius. Yes, you are. Okay, so We can Oh yes. This is the So then this dude, we want it to be smaller than the adiabatic del. So that's the, the condition for stability. So now there's going to be some magic happening in front uh, of you, of your eyes. So we're going to solve for the luminosity. So the 16 I C A T to the fourth G M adiabatic del divided by two kappa P. That has to be greater than the velocity. So 
So remember that the radiation pressure is 80 to the fourth divided by three. So we can substitute that in there. pressure um, and the Eddington limit Except for a four in P. So the condition is So what was the Eddington limit for the luminosity? What did it tell you? What does it tell you? Mm -hmm. So then will this blow up? good right so it means that um, we can have convection before uh, well I, I guess it is it can exist inside uh, of the Eddington limit so it's going to be like the fraction of the pressure that comes from the radiation. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, keep this in the back burner for a little bit. Mm. Well, that is actually the condition um, where you're going to have convection. That's the derivative of the temperature with respect to the pressure. But that is going to be star specific. But this was in the um, in the code in Bob. But we're gonna get um, a few more things with with that Dell. Okay, so. Seen this before. This uh, like a piston. We have the low gas 
passing there. This particular ideal gas is uh, stellar fluid. So consider one kilogram of this substance. The thermal energy density is uh, epsilon. So units are joules per meter cube. So the energy density per kilogram is going to be epsilon over rho. So units joules per kilogram. And we have one kilogram. The volume of one kilogram of fluid is going to change. So the change is going to be one over rho. So meters cubed by kilogram, and we have one kilogram, I get the volume. So the work that is done on the environment by the one kilogram of stellar fluid is going to be P delta one over rho. So a small change in the uh, density. And that's going to be It has to come from the thermal energy. So the change in the thermal energy density uh, is going to be negative. Delta epsilon over rho. So epsilon was pressure divided by gamma minus one. So we can rewrite this whole thing. be pressure Zero. So we're going to get something like pressure and multiply. Thank you. 
Bertrand. So, does it look like we can express that in a more compact way? I didn't, I didn't do this hard, I just assume that it's true. So it's going to be the derivative. So gamma, you know, can be um, five thirds for like an ideal gas, four thirds for um, pure radiation. So the condition um, is going to be different depending on the composition of the star. So with this uh, relationship between the pressure and the density, this is going to be equal to this guy. This one was number one. And the condition of stability it's going to be rho. The uh, uh, radius derivative of the density. So if you subtract this one, it's going to be greater than zero. And then it's called the, uh, I'm just this good. Uh, This definition is the del adiabatic. Is one minus one divided by gamma. So. What is this del adiabatic from a physical point of view? Uh, 
and the derivative of the temperature with respect to the pressure. So what happens if um, it changes very slowly temperature with respect to the pressure? When you have a uh, you know, the blob. It's not going to move. Mm, so if it's really large, let's, let's think about it. Um, yes, it, it will. So that's a part of your train of thought. So the pressure is moving, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the both the actually not necessarily, but the pressure is always going down, right? With radius. The temperature is kind of constant in the uh, close to the core. And the pressure is decreasing. It's going to be going down kind of like that. And then outside of the core, the temperature is going to go down as well, right? So we might start moving kind of slowly like that. So at some point, so the pressure is decreasing. So it's going to go like that. So if the if the temperature is changing with the pressure, then there's not going to be much difference between above and where it is, right? So it's probably not going to move. But as it starts to get uh, further away, when this starts to happening, there's going to be a point in which is going to be um, the blob is going to be unstable. It's going to start moving up. So this is what this cell at the back is telling you, and it's telling you that that is going to depend on where it happens uh, on gamma. So in the case of um, let's say a small star, we have uh, five thirds. What is this value? 
for the homos. This is 0.4. This is 0 0.25. This is a relationship between pressure and pressure. This is not this is not representing an exponential, just representing that. Uh, the rate decreases with with uh, as as you move outside. Which logarithms? Oh, this this one. Don't worry about the logarithms. This is just a relationship between. I was thinking more like this. Yeah, Yeah, so I, I was just trying to represent that the rate decreases. So for the ideal gas, That will be greater kind of Yes, yeah, so it's sharper, so it can start earlier, right? And this one has to move farther away from 25. So if you have um, heavier star, uh, the convection zone should happen um, at a larger rate than if you have a smaller star. And Um, sample of this one. 
So with the best text box, it is like I think four pixels. Right? That is enough to see you <laughs> So you can see my different so once the uh, columns in the homework, you can see. Um, so convection, you can also look at the terms of um, G, so the original um, relation, or the original graphic. So if you're really far away, um, if your LC is really good, then G is right at the end. Actually, the star sources in the material. The field is to So, I'm not actually happy with the minimum. And the minimum is that because the star layer is the minimum star layer, but it will be better. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you get to see that? No, you do that. And then you can have a minimum star layer. I mm -hmm. so, uh, mm -hmm. you can be you can be like, here you go, guys, <laughs> Yep. Um, all right, so that's what I have for today. So I'm going to stop recording already.